Hallelujah. We're back. We are back. I am back, baby. (laughs) Let's go. I didn't want to talk over it because it started started bugging out. Here we are. The council's returned. Season... Two and a half of the I podcast. I thought it was three. Because we kind of took a, a half, we yeah. took us a, a break. Two and a half. Season You're two. Now. That's what matters. Of season three. Two and a half. Of the podcast. Welcome back. My name's Call Me Prof. We're here with Average J Phil. What are y'all's team's names now? Wait. I what are y'all's teams? Gavin uh, McGilvray. Gavin so is straight. Vincent is bisexual. <laughs> I'm Zach is Harding's by son. Yeah, so... Oh. I'm the only, I'm the only real loyal to the program here. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Y'all's names are sweet. So we're here with the council video. Hope uh, the when the league tunes in, they're gonna enjoy this. Today we're gonna be going over the draft, some of the week one stuff, a little power rankings preview, and then going over week two and the game of the week. Y'all know the drill. Um, we're excited to be back. You know, we're gonna kind of try to keep it shorter and sweeter. We say this every year, but we're actually gonna do it now for real. And we don't have infinite time, so we're gonna actually keep it short and sweet. So, without further ado, Gavin, take us to the draft. All right, draft review time. Let's go. All right, and I I lead us off, Gavin. Can we get that first round showing up at the top of the screen for favor? Yeah. We've cut off Christian McCaffrey's head up there in the top left. Um, I... Oh, bingo, bango. Okay. So first we got Zach's team. Um, he picked first, very obvious first pick in Christian McCaffrey, although maybe High the scoring. hazards of drafting three weeks too early. Now mm. he's got the Achilles tendonitis. Mm. Um, so what we said we were going to do is give a, what was it, best pick? Best value, least value, and then an overall draft grade. Is that? Yeah, Probably so I'll just clarify so, that before so, recording. No. So we're just going to take it team by team. Luke, you're going to take this first team. Tell us what you like about his team, what you don't like about his team, um, and then give him an overall draft grade. And then we're going to go do that with every team. And then at the very end, we're going to give our best steal of the draft and best reach of the draft out of the whole board, not just for each team. Uh, and then we'll move on from that. And so included with the letter grade, obviously, with the specific team. So, Luke, you're going first. Um, take Boom. us away with Zach. So, Zach had what I think, and I think we all talked about this before recording, was a good draft. Um, obviously, being really good friends with Zach. Uh, I texted him after the draft, and while he said he didn't really like his team, which for a little bit of friendship backstory, every year he loves his team. <laughs> <laughs> and this year he didn't, um, but I think it's a good team. So McCaffrey, very good start. Uh, Mike Evans and Pacheco, we got a good wide receiver and running back base as well to bolster with McCaffrey. And then we got a couple, I mean, a bunch of good wide receiver picks. McConkey, I think, is the little spoiler alert, best value out of those four guys. Hollywood injury is unfortunate. Um. Then Njoku, obviously he's hurt, so it's kind of a biased thing there. Um, Chuba is just, I don't really know why we're doing that in the year 2024. <laughs> um, but, I mean, Goffin, what was that, the 14th? is He's playing at 13th. He's playing in nothing but domes and home games, which is in a dome. But he has a really easy schedule. I think Goff's going to be a – Top 12 quarterback, you got him in the 13th round. I really liked Zach's team. Um, and yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, I, I, there was a lot of Pacheco hype. And so he capitalized uh, with that third round pick and then, uh, and then tr- quadrupled down on the receivers. Didn't take his quarterback till round 13, which I thought was kind of, it's a good build. You know, Zach and Gavin were going for who can last longest for taking a quarterback. <laughs> um, but what would you say? Letter grade, what would you give Zach here, Luke? I'd give it a solid B, B plus. I mean, I think the picks that aren't great are late. I think he nailed his beginning. I like the strategy of you take two just solid, always going to start week in, week out running backs and go hammer wide receiver depth. Hmm. Um, 
I mean, if your knock is you're taking Chuba Hubbard with your 11th round pick, I think you did something right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'd give it at least a B, probably, maybe a B plus. Um, nothing else, really. But... Nice. Well, you know, it's interesting you talk about taking solid running backs um, because you didn't take your first running back till round five. But, Gavin, <laughs> let's uh, give us give us your rundown of Long's team. Well, I thought I'd throw in – uh, some personal experience, a personal anecdote, because I think I've got something helpful here for Wingfield's team. Oh, okay. So McCaffrey is um, obviously sidelined with Achilles tendonitis. And as a survivor of bilateral Achilles tendonitis, I thought I'd give y'all a little update on the timeline on that. Um, oh, <laughs> okay. I, How long? sophomore year of college, had bilateral Achilles to the night so I had to take the bus everywhere uh and I got back and I have not yet to return to that physical ability so um I think McCaffrey's career is probably over because I am way slower than I was before that so I don't know if this is something you can recover from okay hopefully Zach listens and keeps that in mind weeks yeah trade him but I just stay strong Christian it's a brotherhood, those who have had Achilles tendonitis. <laughs> but um, yeah, look at that slight digression. This is why we always go an hour. But um, Gavin, could I was you about played? to say, we spent could five minutes have... on the first team. Could you have played? Did I have played in the NFL? Yeah, yeah. Uh, behind the 49ers line, I think that as pre-injury, I think I could have gotten positive yards. But after the when I had Achilles tendonitis, I, I just didn't have the same burst. Uh, so right. I don't think I would have been able to. Uh, so maybe you would you have would you have thought your backup might have been better? Yeah, I would have gone. Jordan Mason okay. would have been taking carries from me while I was injured. I would okay. confidently say that. And McCaffrey's yeah, the yeah. same. So for for probably the majority of the season, I imagine. Well, we'll, we'll see about that. But <laughs> something to talk as about. As the Jordan but... Mason over on Bias. Anyway, Gavin, take us yeah, away. Long with team. So we're moving on. Not going to give let anyone grade their own team, but um, I think that. You know, the the best part of this exercise right now is how do my opinions on these this team change post week one? And I think that Longs had a pretty damn good start, like a pretty good week one. Hill looked amazing besides, you know, uh, being arrested. But that's always – he's fighting for something. That's what I like to see. Hey, hey we're not getting political on the fans. Yeah, no, I didn't say guy. anything. Let's, let's stick that. to the field, buddy. Let's stick to the Nico's field. Nico's usage looked great. Vonta had a good usage. I didn't like the Stroud pick during the draft or the Kenneth Walker pick, but after how they performed in the first round or the first week of the season, Walker looks like he's getting great usage and Stroud looks like he's going to get great usage. So, and Adonai Mitchell, if <laughs> Anthony Richardson can actually make the throws with when he's got a clean pocket instead of scrambling all over the place, he can... Uh, Mitchell could have some value just based on his usage. So I think that this is a draft that has looks a lot better post week one than it did before with the way that Montgomery and Walker were used. Not so mm-hmm. much maybe with Javonta Williams. That that was a bit of a rough start, but I think that it looks a lot better now than it did pre draft. And I think that honestly, the way that you built your team, David Montgomery might be one of the better picks you made because he's looking like the Lions want to use him run through Mm -hmm. uh, MF face just to quote uh, Marshawn Lynch but overall I'd say that this at post draft I would have given this like a C plus but I think post week one I it looks to me more of a B B plus like uh, Wingfield so that's my yeah with my gut I I never understand, or it was kind of confusing how Montgomery uh, is so devalued in like ADPs, but the Lions are like so obviously going to use him and he's going to be the workhorse and like one of the best offenses in the NFL. It's just, I think it's crazy how he went that low, but like that's where he's going in drafts. Yeah, certainly. I mean, he doesn't have any receiving work, but he gets the ball and he averages five yards of carry. So that's, that'll play. That'll play. That's exactly right. Montgomery is the Gibbs owner. I I had him. I had Montgomery last year, and I love him. But you know, I kind of want Gibbs to take more work. 
Um, I'll take the next team, Passwitz team here. Uh, Passwitz and I conversed beforehand about rankings, and ironically, he and Gavin used the same rankings, I know. So his draft, I agreed a lot of the, with the picks, but I do think he probably got carried away in some of the hype and the advanced analytics. Obviously, there's just been one week, so we don't know. Um, but let's go over his team. So CD Lamb, 103, that was kind of a stock pick. The top three picks were... Um, pretty formal in the PPR double flex league. Derrick Henry at the 210 um, seemed like a little bit of a reach, but he did have the highest betting line for Russian TDs on the year. So um, we'll see. You know, they had, they kind of got game scripted away last week, but uh, we'll see. And then Debo Samuel, this was before the Ayuk extension. And if Ayuk was shipped off to the Steelers, this pick would have been amazing. But now that Ayuk has stayed, we don't really know how it's going to be. He did get a lot of usage last week with CMC out, so we'll see. But my favorite thing about Jackson Passwitz team, I don't know why I said Jackson Passwitz, Passwitz <laughs> team, is the rounds four through eight were so good. McBride falling to 410. Amari Cooper at 5'1", who didn't have a good week, but he's going to be fine. Tyler, Deontay Johnson, and then Brian Thomas Jr. I think those five picks is where Passwitz made his team awesome. Later on, he goes for the you know the upside, ambiguous running back backfields, and then Javon Baker, Bucky Irving, even last pick is pretty good. Um, and this is kind of a uh, a it's like a hero, it's a hero build, but it's like a new age hero build where you also take double uh, elite onesie positions, and then you just try to hit on one of the later running backs, which actually Gavin kind of did this year as well, except he didn't do the elite onesies. So, um, but we're gonna get to that. I would give this draft an A minus just because I don't um, I don't like the results from the RB2s from week one. And then I think Kyler and McBride are going to be fine. But yeah, I would say A minus. None of, none of those players really wowed week one except Brian Thomas, which looks like a great pick. So. Um, I would give it an A minus. Would any of y'all agree, disagree? I agree. I think we all I, yeah. think that the Brian Thomas pick could be that could be um a really big pick there. Yeah. Like he's got a lot of potential. And some of these RBs are probably gonna be good, but they're all younger guys who hopefully will take some more work as the season goes on with different game scripts. <laughs> so I bet one of them gives him solid RB yeah. too. Yeah, I think this is a little I, disappointing. Oh, sorry. Yes. No, that's what exactly what I was gonna say. I think Spears looked a lot better at the draft as opposed to now when he got really out snapped and out carried by Pollard. Um, but still great draft. Yeah, I agree. Jack, take the take Max. All right. Uh so looking at Max's team. The biggest takeaways is it feels very top heavy. Um, I think he started the draft off pretty good. Uh, he kind of did close to the classic, you know, running back, wide receiver, quarterback, tight end, but he pushed the tight end back one more round. Um, but the the main issue I have with the draft is – the bottom half, once you get past the worthy pick, it really feels like there's no depth there. I think Myers could be okay. He had some good games last year. But Williams, he's going to – I mean, Lazard looked great for the Jets. And obviously this is – it's hard to say uh, in hindsight, but Williams looked uh, – or Lazard looked almost as good or better than Wilson, than Mike Williams. Um the Raiders are going to suck. The Panthers are going to suck. Like I wouldn't want any part of those offenses, especially if they're not the go-to guy. And then, I mean, you know, barring an injury, I don't think Miller or Pierce are going to um, be startable any week. And then Chubb, who's just, you know, even when he comes back, he's, he's coming off an injury. Are the Browns just going to forget about Ford? Who's been pretty productive <laughs> since he's left? Probably not. Um, so he's going to have to get a lot of his points from, uh, the top half of his draft and, uh, ETN didn't look great week one. Um, 
but you know, I don't want to overreact just based off of one week. What I I found it interesting how he spent all his fab on likely, but he also has Andrews. So every week he's gonna have to like, you know, who do I start between and it would it would make I didn't even realize this until <laughs> just now, but the it, it's gonna be like an internal warfare of who to start, and you're never gonna know which one. Tight end hell, be. yeah. <laughs> right. So um factoring that into the draft you know uh i'd give it like a c i'm not really in love with it uh i mean you still have josh allen and jamar chase uh who could combine for like 70 any week so um it's not bad but i just have a lot of um question marks and worries with it um but i do think worthy could be a big breakout so i like that pick i i would say just to jump in i think that what could really save this draft is i'm not that worried about andrews and i think that kamara had great usage but um what could make this draft go from kind of meh to great is Keon coleman looked like he might be the bills wide receiver one and worthy looks like a guy who in your flex could go nuts just mm-hmm. out of nowhere so i think that coleman and worthy were guys i wasn't big on coming into the year but they looked pretty good in week one which could help him out a lot in my opinion so gr- grade overall jack i gave it like a, a c c minus hmm. i am um... This isn't really about Max's draft. I mean, it is, but it also really is more of a philosophical question when it comes to drafting. It's, I mean, Max always goes for the onesie positions early. You know, he always goes some semblance of running back, wide receiver, quarterback, tight end. And it always, to me personally, not that this is a knock on Max, but just in general, because LJ kind of did it too, and we can talk about that later. It feels like you lose out on value at running back and wide receiver in those later rounds just because I don't I don't know do y'all guys think that factor did it all in Max's draft like it feels like he could have gone and gotten like Cup or somebody instead of Josh Allen and then gotten Goff in the 12th but instead he got Josh Allen in the third and now I get Thielen in the 12th like what are y'all what are y'all's thoughts mm-hmm. when it comes to drafting just you know I think uh with our settings it does benefit to have an elite quarterback and then after week one it looked like josh allen at the 304 is a great pick because there were like three quarterbacks that went over 20 26 points or something on rosters at least and josh allen was one of them and so i think you know i i don't mind it it seems a lot worse because mark andrews had a really bad week and then coleman addison like weren't really worthy of like a wide receiver too so it looks bad now, but I think in the long run, I've I've been I've had leagues before where, or where been in seasons before where I'm like, man, this team is so good. I just have depth. I wish I could upgrade to get an elite tight end or quarterback, but they're hard to get. So I think later on in the year they're kind of hard to get. But we're gonna move on. Sorry, I I'm sorry okay. if anyone else had thoughts. Um, but I'm gonna talk Luke, and take, talk about Gavin. Yeah, it's perfect precursor because <laughs> Gavin did the opposite of Max, which is why I asked the question. <laughs> Big brain hosting. Gavin didn't take a tight end until week 11 and didn't even draft a quarterback. Um, and then got Herbert off of waivers, who has now since been dropped. Um, so Gavin went with the kind of a hero RB build, but then still hit on all of the wide receivers, which is kind of nuts. So Gavin went Brees Hall at the 1-5, then Waddle. Pup looks like a great value pick after Puka's injury in IR. Neighbors, that's really dependent on Daniel Jones. Slant Boy 2.0 looks like he might be the best value pick of the draft. He, I checked Fantasy Pros earlier today, and he's like the wide receiver seven rest of the season or something, just bonkers. Ridley looked good, and then he doubled down and got all those kind of – they're kind of filler running backs, but on – I mean, Dowdle's the only one on a good offense there, but he's got some running back depth. Briar Muth, I was a little confused on the Muth pick. Felt a little 2019-ish, um, but he got Hawkinson once he comes back on IR. Um, analytics favorite Dontavian Wicks. 
it's I think it's a great draft. Um, once again, I feel like he did the opposite of what he did last year with the RB zero build, where he got hero RB and hit on all of his receivers. I'd give it at least probably an A, um, maybe A plus. I think it could be the best, like post week one best draft of the league. I don't know. Gavin can't talk, but what are y'all's thoughts on it, William and Jack? Um, I think the only, I mean, <clears throat> the only knock I would have on it is that he didn't take a quarterback. Um, but it's it's kind of one of those things where it's like quarterbacks can matter a lot in our league, or they cannot matter a lot. Um, because like it's six point touchdown. So if if you have a really solid quarterback, it's really important. But if you just have a mid quarterback, it's like what's the difference between a a pretty mid quarterback and a kind of mid quarterback? So I guess that's kind of the approach that he took. So if you you know if you punt quarterback that far, you might as well just not draft one anyway, which makes sense. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the only thing I would say. Yeah, I I will briefly. I, Gavin and I have talked already, but after round two, his next six picks, seven, eight, really, were all players I was high on, but it didn't really work taking them with my build or with my ADP. With Cup, Neighbors, Rice, Ridley, who I told him probably shouldn't have taken a fifth receiver before your second running back. You know, a bench player before you even fill out the starting lineup. Um, but uh, and then all those running backs too, I was really high on. Uh, and then Cup looks amazing. Neighbors to the four eight is amazing, and Rice in the fifth round is amazing. So this is the best draft in my opinion. I would give it an A plus. Yeah, Gavin, you can break your silence briefly and then talk about Jack. Yes. Um, the one thing I would say as a knock on my draft, I'm very happy with it. I looks like most of these players are going to be pretty playable as long as Will Levis, you know, has an IQ over room temperature. But um, the thing that the problem that I had with starting with five wide receivers is obviously one of them I can't start. And then the other thing is that I felt the need to go <laughs> four straight running backs and a tight end. I, I only took one receiver for the rest of the draft. And in doing that, I missed out on getting a guy like Brian Thomas or Lab McConkey or uh, obviously Keon Coleman went before like in that same area, but I missed out on a lot of those. Like Jamison Williams is a guy who I liked and would have potentially taken, but I had to take running backs instead. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of late round wide receiver value that I missed out on by forcing myself onto the RB path with all those early picks. So that would be, I think, the in hindsight, the biggest downside to this build, but obviously it worked. It looks like it's worked out because I've, I think that the players I did end up getting are going to be valuable. But moving on to Jack. So Jack always has a pretty competitive draft, in my opinion. He started with a way that I really love with uh, three wide receivers. And I think this is his, the best thing going on for him is that he started three wide receivers. None of them really had very good week ones, but I'm not super concerned about any of them. Alave may not be super like at value, but I do think he's going to be someone you're playing every week. But he was still able to get James Cook and Joe Mixon. And both those teams look like they're actually more run heavy than we were expecting going into the season. Got Godwin after that. Swift, who had a great usage. Ferguson, who's going to be a problem while he's out. And he's going to need another tight end. But he did get one of those good quarterbacks who, well, and whenever he comes back, I think that's a guy who you're going to start every week in a league like ours with so many elite weapons. Love's going to have passing touchdowns. And he has a little bit of the max thing going on where I don't love most of the guys late that he got, but I still think that he hit his top, you know, seven guys are all valuable. None of these guys look like they're going to be busts. Um, except for maybe like Olave, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Ayuk may have underperformed, but everyone beneath them overperformed. So as long as some of these guys get to, you know, even part of what they were worth when you drafted them, this is still going to be a really solid team. Uh, tight ends a weakness, like we talked about, but 
it's a weakness for everyone because there's no good tight ends this year apparently except for Kyle Pitts. But uh, my what? opinion on this draft, <laughs> my opinion on this draft would probably be I think it's rough start after week one, so that makes it a bit of a B plus for me. Uh, but it could totally turn into a juggernaut in the league if two of his top three picks turn out to be w- what they were drafted as. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't jump to say uh, Ferguson is a weakness at tight end. I mean, obviously the injury hurts, um, but I think he's going to be a pretty. I mean, he led the NFL in end zone targets last year, at least for tight ends. I think he might have led for all receivers. Um, and so I think he could be good. I think Mixon's the one might be one of the best picks of the draft in general, but I think it's his mm-hmm. best pick. I mean, he had like 30, 35 touches in one of the best offenses. He's going to be, he's going to be really good. Mm-hmm. 30 carries. Holy cow. It's insane. Yeah. He's a great pick. Um, next team here is Brett. I'm taking Brett, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I agree with Gavin's ass- assessment of Jack, by the way, and then to add. So Brett's team had uh, Jefferson at 107, but then went during at the draft, um, if y'all remember, when Saquon fell all the way back to 206, Brett was ecstatic, and it looks <laughs> like it might be one of the best picks in the first two rounds because Saquon looks like the truth. Probably a top, I mean, now that McCaffrey's gone, maybe a top three running back um, rest of the season, depending on McCaffrey's status. I mean, he looks amazing. I took two running backs at the turn, and neither of them were the correct breakout for week one. Now, obviously, it's just one week, but um, second one looked good. Um, and then he only took three receivers in the first eight rounds, but then his fourth receiver was Jameson Williams, who followed all the training camp hype and actually delivered week one. And I think Brett actually has a really good team. Anthony Richardson, they ran the least amount of plays in the league, and he scored 31 fantasy points. And then Brock Bowers also looks great in his first week as a rookie. Christian Kirk is probably not the wide receiver one there anymore, so that might not be good. And then Diggs was a bit of a reach in the third um, because why take Diggs when you can take Tank Dell in the fifth and it's kind of the same <laughs> player. But Diggs did score the touchdown. So um, I like Brett's team a lot. And then Stevenson looks great. His running back room is great. His wide receiver room is great. This looks exactly like a team I would have drafted at that position. Similar, at least, or like, you know, previous years, I've drafted a team very similar to this, where it doesn't look like a, wow, that's going to, that's risky. And then, you know, and now this player hits, wow, he's going to win the league. But it's definitely like a, this is a really good, solid team. There's not a lot of players that are just going to be like, oh my gosh, week win like league winning player, but like a solid team. And there's a lot of fa- a really good foundation for Brett. So personally, I like this team uh, and I would give it an A. What I will say I like the most about Brett's team is his seven, eight, nine picks seem like they all have hit. They look mm-hmm. fantastic. Ramondre Stevenson, Brock Bowers, Jamison Williams in the seven, eight, nine rounds. That, that's the best value probably that anyone got in our draft in terms of getting guys late. He's got three starters late to go with, you know, a pretty solid cast that he got at the beginning with Justin Jefferson falling later into the first. And he looks like he's still got it. So Dar- is Darnold the truth? <laughs> Find out next time. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, but um, I, I would agree. I think it's totally an A-plus draft or an A, a draft for sure. Yep. Jack, talk about Spencer's team. Um, <clears throat> so the glaring obvious thing about his draft is he went – Bijan and London first two picks and I don't think he realized initially I mean obviously he eventually did but spending out your first two picks on uh two players on the same team I just I just don't especially I mean I know the Falcons had some hype but like you got to be the the you know the 2019 Chiefs to be doing something like that um so I really don't like that that start and um, I don't know. He just has a lot of picks that I'm I'm not really a fan of. Uh, I'm personally I'm not wasn't big on the Kelsey pick. I just think he's aging, and the Chiefs are um really going to limit his usage in the regular season. 
Um, but I understand the Kelsey Mahomes stack. Uh, and then Higgins, Higgins is always hurt. But when he's healthy, I don't know. There's just a lot of question marks. Um, I'm not in love with Reed um, just because there's so many. It, it's It just feels like every week it's going to be a different guy for the Packers. Um, but, I mean, if there was a guy I'd want to have on the Packers, it would be Reed. Um, yeah, just, I don't know. There's a lot of picks that I'm not I'm not a big fan of. I mean, White. I'm I don't, obviously it's it's hard to say after week one because it's so easy to make assumptions that this is how it's going to be the rest of the year. But why didn't look good at all? Um, I mean, Eckler didn't wasn't involved very much. Um, but I do think that Zeke could really return a lot of value. That Zeke pick. Uh, I mean, he comes out first playing freaking hurdles a guy. Uh, <laughs> I think he's going to be fired up to be playing for the Cowboys again. He might eat. And he's probably going to be the uh, goal. Uh, he's definitely going to be the goal back. So on one of the best offenses. So I think that pick could return a lot of value. Um, I don't hate his team, um, but I don't love it. I'd give it, I'd give it a solid C plus. Hmm. Yeah. Gavin. I think that's fair. Um, I, I'm a little, I like it a little more just because I would say, I think that Jaden Reed, is i'm just a big fan i think he's fantastic msu guy obviously but i think at when love is back obviously it's going to be a bit rough with <laughs> uh malik willis but um whenever you get love back i think that reed's going to eat they want to get him the ball and they draw stuff up for him more than they do any of their other receivers which i think obviously too many mouths to feed but he's the one who's getting the most like fed the most yeah. consistently he's got all those manufactured fair. touches and then Higgins is back. And so obviously, yeah, he had a pretty rough start to the year, but I do think that Reed and Higgins, and I don't think London will be this bad. So I, I don't know if they get upside than you do, but William, I don't, I don't hate the back. London pick. I just hate the London pick after drafting Bijan. That's just, the that's big. not how that's I like to do it, but that's what happens. Well, next team is LJ's team. Luke, uh, why don't you give us a rundown for his team? Yep. So first off, LJ started with the classic McClendon opener. <laughs> we went running back, wide receiver, running back, quarterback, tight end. Uh, Laporta was not the first tight end off the board, so that's a little bit of value. I think at this point when we drafted, he was typically – and then we kind of threw it back to 2021 with Keenan Allen, James Conner, Raheem Mostert. <laughs> respectable, respectable depth. We got Zach Moss, the starter for the Bengals. That looks like a great pick because it was supposed to be kind of a 1A, 1B with uh, Chase Brown, and Chase Brown didn't do crap week one. Not that Zach Moss did a whole bunch either on that Bengals offense, but he looks like he's kind of separating. Um. Then we got Sutton and just a – did he finish the draft wide receiver? Yeah, he did finish the draft <laughs> wide receiver. Um, looks like just out of that bunch, we got the eternal time father, Tyler Lockett, uh, and, jo- and Josh Downs. And other than that, we got a bunch of kind of flyer wide receivers. I guess I mean, Sutton's not a flyer, but he's Cortland Sutton. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm never going to be a fan of Cortland Sutton draft pick. Uh, but overall, I I'd give it a C plus B maybe maybe a B minus just depending on upside on the top end with those first four picks. Uh, but he kind of kind of pulled a max where that back of the draft isn't the best value wise. I would love yeah. to hear y'all's thoughts. I feel like I'm the yeah, so I remember that. LJ getting sniped like three or four times. <laughs> Um, and hating, hating his team around like round like nine or 10. And you could tell because he only had two receivers going in around nine. And so he just receiver, 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 <laughs> receiver, receiver, rest of the draft trying to make up that lost time. Um, I know he wanted Higgins and ended up taking Allen. And then the quarterback tied in like at the top already doesn't get let you have value. So he decided to go this more running back build. And I like the Raheem Mostert pick and the Zach Moss pick. Um, 
And then Kyron at 2-4, you know, kind of went under some turmoil. I think this team is fine. Like, the Hurts-Brown stack's going to win weeks when they go off. Um, but I'd like, I mean, he's relying on Mostert, who's hurt now, and Moss, who's, you know, the starter for an offense now. But he's relying on those two guys in his flex. And so he's going to be looking for a one or two flex um, all year. Uh until he finds one, and I'm sure he can find one. But um, and then Keenan Allen is like the wide receiver three for uh, or or a in a three way split, you know, for Caleb Williams who threw 93 passing yards, even though he got all the volume. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's only been one week, but yeah, I agree with your assessment. B B minus. <laughs> I am I'm amused that he uh <clears throat> he's kind of got a good pick, bad pick, good pick. Oh, did we lose the long. Uh, well, one bottom back. Just keep going. He'll be back. He'll be back. But uh, someone watch for the let yeah, back yeah. in. I got but, it. Uh, he had a bit of a good pick, bad pick thing going on because he went, there he is. He went Laporta, good pick. Allen, bad pick. Connor, good pick. Mostert, bad pick. Moss, good pick. Sutton, bad pick. Lockett, good pick. And that's just <laughs> how it looks after week one. But he had a really good st stretch of good, bad, good, bad. So, you know, hmm. that's a couple good players. Even yeah, if he yeah. didn't get a lot of the guys he wanted, I think he still managed to hit on a 50% hit rate. That's not bad. Well, and I we think... all know we all know Connor's going to be good until he isn't, and he's sidelined for whatever injury he'll have, which is yeah. guaranteed to happen. Yeah. All right. So I Gavin, think I've got James. 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 Yep. So James, strong start. Uh, with a very healthy Puka Nakua. Um, that's brutal for him just to lose him right out of the gate. He's already on IR. could be a little while. But uh, Wilson looked like he was getting good volume. Jacobs looked great. Lamar is going to be pretty good, I imagine. I think that Aaron Jones looked a lot better than I expected going into the year. That might be just because he was playing the Giants, but he got more work than I was thinking, so... That's a pick that I didn't like that now looks a lot better. Kittle, that's the problem of there's just too many damn good players on San Francisco. They didn't really need to use him against the Jets, so hopefully he can still give you some really good weeks. Hopkins didn't look like he was going to do anything, but he also, in terms of Tennessee players, looks like he got the RB1 in Tennessee with the workload that Pollard had. That's a guy who you could probably roll out every week, which is awesome because he was obviously looking for that pick in Singletary next, which he looked like he had his control of the backfield. So I don't know. That's worth something, <laughs> even if it is the Giants. They can't be that bad every week, right? But um, Dobbs, they got Purdy. He got Purdy as a backup. I think that was not a draft pick because he was out uh, chasing tail in D.C. with Max. But uh that then ended off with Mooney and Gibson. Mo Gibson, did he do anything? I don't – oh, it, uh, it's not loading. Anyway, but uh, I don't think that there's a ton of value in these later rounds, but I do think that he's got enough solid players that he will be fine with Puka being gone. He is really sore with – He's going to have good running backs and enough guys to flex, but his his wide receiver too is going to be rough for a little while. And for that, kind of, that's kind of why I'm looking at a C-plus kind of draft, which is above average. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. I had Wi-Fi issues that I'd step in to announce my return. And also talking yes. about James' team, I think I would give it at least a B-minus before the Puka injury. I think yeah. it's... Definitely, you know, I I guess depending on who you want to flex, you have two solid wide receivers and running backs. You can start week in, week out. Um, I mean, I'd probably start Pollard over Jones, to be honest, just because he had that really impressive workload week one. But I think compared to some teams that we've just talked about, James had probably better depth in the back half with Dobbs. And I don't mind Leggett. I mean, he's on the Panthers, but, like, he's a rookie. He had, I think, I think decent production, like eight or nine points, better than a lot of rookie receivers week one. Um, I I think that James pre-Puka and honestly post-Puka maybe 
a little different. But like week five, when everyone's healthy again, I think James is kind of a good team. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. Well, I'll take the next one. Um, my favorite part of the draft, obviously, because this is where I was. So a little bit of backstory. So a week before the draft, I had told um Jack that I was thinking about taking Harrison and then A Chan at the turn, but I was like, ah, oh, that's too rich. That's too rich. <laughs> and then on the way back from the draft after it, Jack was saying, Yeah, when you were telling me that, um, I, I had in my mind that's exactly what I'm doing. Is that right, Jack? What what when when yeah, I was telling no. you that, what were you thinking? Well, you were you were telling me that, and I was like, in my head, I was like, oh, I think that's kind of how I want to start mine. And obviously, I knew I was going to get the first pick, but I was like, I don't think I'm going to get – I don't think a chance going to make it back to me, and then he did. Um, but it was just kind of funny. Yeah, so um, so I liked Jack's draft a lot. Uh, I liked – my favorite picks are the – I like A-Chain a lot. He looks like he could have some league-winning usage. Jaden Daniels looks amazing. I liked Brian Robinson a lot, but he didn't really have a great week. J.K. Dobbins is a great pick. So Jack went with a – Got his four receivers, so a valuable receivers through the flex, and then went his hero RB with HAN, HAN, but then really hit on two of his mid late running backs for that RB2 spot. Um, and all he needs now is Kincaid and Prescott, Prescott or Daniels to produce consistently. And this is a really good team. You know, Pittman um, had the majority of the target share. Uh, DJ Moore, you know, Pittman and or DJ Moore suffered from bad quarterback play and McLaurin kind of similar, but it was a down week for everyone. And then Harrison, uh, I'm not really worried about, like on a panic level, I'd give it about like a two out of 10. I think he's going to be fine, but I, I really like Jack's team. You know, he sniped me on a few uh, and that was annoying to deal with, but, um, but yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good team. I would give it a A minus. <laughs> Yeah, I I'd, yeah. I'd also give it an A minus. I think it's a great draft. I think you executed. I don't know if this was your plan going into the draft, but here RB looks great. Mm-hmm. Considering you hit on Dobbins in the tenth, or is that the eleventh? I can't I can't read the eleventh and some combination of Brian Robinson and Benson's going to hit for depth. Um, I think it's a great great draft. I like it, but what I will say is. From a post week one perspective, starting off with Marvin Harrison, Pittman, Moore, and McLaurin, and even Kincaid, you can throw in here. That is a rough start. I think that I have faith in Harrison. I have, I think that Pittman's going to have some value just with some volume. And Kincaid, I have no, I'm not even worried about. But uh, McLaurin and Moore with rookie quarterbacks, I think that's. Definitely a little dodgy, but the value that you got later in the draft really helps your team recover from those concerns I have. Jalen McMillan, that's a starting receiver on the Bucks. So if Godwin or like 83% of the snaps that as a rookie in his first career game, that's someone who got to be talking about more, honestly, because that, that's a great snag your late round value is going to help your team a lot, I think, here. And Elijah Mitchell fills up one of your IR spots for the rest of the year. So that's huge. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> mad about that pick because I had in my mind, I was like, how is he not, how is the backup for the 49ers not gone? Like if CMC ever gets hurt, they're a bona fide RB1. And so I had the right mindset, but then he gets hurt. <laughs> and then Jordan Mason puts up like the best running back week. Um but yeah, those five guys you mentioned, Gavin, all combined for 23 points, my five of my first six rounds, which really sucks in week one. Oh, but I'm not I'm I'm really happy with my draft. Typically I go in with guys that I want, um, but like I only get one or two of them. And I would say Robinson, Benson, and Dobbins were all late round running backs I wanted, and I got all of them. So I'm really happy about that. And I really wanted Jaden Daniels. Um, my biggest concerns was like is a Chan going to be worth the reach, which after week one, I feel like he is. Um, my biggest concern was going to be running back. And I'm not worried about running back at all. I think 
uh, a Chan Robinson and Dobbins are all RB ones right now after week one, which obviously I don't expect that going forward, but I'm assuming the receivers and Kincaid will figure it out. Um, so if, if it comes week four and I'm still worried about them, then I'll be worried. But right now I'm, I'm happy with my draft. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it can only get better after this week. Nope. You were 12th out of 12. So that's true. <laughs> but wait, I was wait, 11. Real quick. So... I do I, one more thing about uh, Jack's team. Sure. Which, I mean, obviously anyone, any long time listeners of the pod know that, I'm going to like this Trey Benson pick because it is the 9-11 pick. And mm. today is 9-11. So I thought I'd just take a moment and point that out, you know, because I like to find little things in the, in the stats, find some 9s and 11s, but today's the big day. So go on, you pick Trey Benson, good pick, 9-11, never forget. I might on. need to uh, start on. I might need to start Benson next week. After that, honestly, that's right. And inspired, it's like the Castellanos is is Trey Benson the new Nick Castellanos? We'll find <laughs> out. <laughs> um, all right, I'll go ahead and talk about Williams' team. Um, this, I mean, really up and down. I I like. I think I like every pick um, in this draft. Um, this is just one of the more solid um solid drafts overall um gibbs and taylor to start um you've got two running backs locked and loaded for the year as long as they're healthy um i think i mean gibbs this is more or less the same that we saw last year he's gonna be you know getting 15 touches 15 maybe 20 touches in a really good offense and he's gonna be really efficient um and then like we've already mentioned the colts they ran the least amount of snaps on offense. So I'm not really worried about Taylor, even though he's kind of a little disappointing Um, week one, but I like the receivers. Um, I think Dell could be a little boomer bust um, now that Diggs is there, but he's obviously going to have really big weeks. That'll, that'll be new weeks. Um, And then uh, I like, I mean, I like Pitts and Burrow. Pitts caught a touchdown, which is a beautiful thing to see. Uh, a little just I'm just worried about the Falcons offense in general Kirk Cousins looked really bad um, but I th- I think it'll be fine and then same with Burrow Burrow's gonna be fine that should be a floor week um, but really like Warren we know he's gonna be efficient might not be super high volume Samuel will probably Samuel's gonna be tough because he's gonna have good weeks you're just not gonna know when they're gonna come I mean the Bills just have so many guys um, but I think that Jalen Wright pick could turn out to be uh really good um and same with michael wilson and then charbonnet i can't believe charbonnet's dropped all the way to 12 um i mean could be a second year breakout and especially if kenneth walker gets hurt but yeah i mean i really like every pick every pick in this uh in this draft i'd give it a solid i'd give it a solid a Yeah. I agree. I think it's a really solid draft. So because I just complimented you, I'm going to raise my concerns about Jonathan Taylor. Mm. I just, he's part of that Colts offense where it's really hard to, I think that they're going to win games, but I don't know if they can rely on a- Anthony Richardson. Like, is he a guy who's going to pr- produce enough fantasy value for like the rest of the team with guys who I'm worried about, like Pittman and Taylor, some early round picks who they're relying on a quarterback who can do it himself, or he can throw it 60 yards down the field to Alec Pierce, which no one wants that. Why? Like great throw, but let's concentrate things on the important guys. But yeah, I think I agree that I was, I was a Mar- Michael Wilson guy. So he had that one touchdown fast, more to come. He's a real breakout wide receiver on the Cardinals this year. Sorry, I'm, Marv. I'm I'm really pressed because I had Michael Wilson um like over 25 and a half yards. And on that last drive, he had like a 30-yard catch 
it hit him right in the hands and he just dropped it. So I might be off the Michael Wilson train after that. Not gonna <laughs> lie. Brutal. Yeah. He's a bum. Changed my mind. Yeah, right. I'm Are we... I'm upset with my Jalen Warren. I wish I'd taken Brian Thomas and then come back around in the ninth round with Jaden Daniels. Oh, that would have been such a good team. But anyway, Jalen Warren and Curtis Samuels not even on the roster anymore. So that looks like a bust. Anyway, so that's gonna do it. <laughs> For the draft recap, we don't really have time to do our like single biggest reaches. I mean, if does anyone want to do like if there was one specific pick that like really stood out to you? Luke, did you have one? I am gonna cheat and say Rice and Mixon, just back to back in the yeah. at the fifth right there. I think that's for you know, those are both looking like really good picks. Or Brian Thomas. I mean, you know. I think, yeah. I think Rice and Mixon and BTR, those are the consensus. I mean, we already kind of talked about him. Gavin, do you have any thoughts? I'm going to go again with what I said about Brett's draft, where he hit uh, any of these three of Ramondre, Bowers, uh, J-Mo. That's such good value there. I'm just amazed. Like, that's a starting – that's a top five tight end, potentially. Top 10 running back. So, a really explosive wide receiver. Top 10 running back. That's not true. Top 20 running back. Uh that's a that's a lot of value there. I love that little run he went on. I'd say Ramondre is one of, probably one of my favorite picks. Him or Lad McConkney. I that's yeah. another guy I like a lot. But cool. Jack. Um I'd say the biggest steals is probably uh Dobbins and Daniels, and then the best reach that paid off is a Chan. Um <laughs> Have to agree. Uh, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I mean, and and this is, uh, I mean, this isn't fair after week one because yeah. there was an injury. But I think Cup is probably going to could end up being the best, the best pick of the draft. I was going to take him uh, where I took Pittman, which I don't know why I thought he was ever going to make it back to me. Um, Eighty was whack before our I, draft. Yeah, it was. I mean, and the thing is, is like Cup was not supposed to go to the fourth um but Laporta yeah the second yeah it, it, laporta fell two rounds but yeah i think that i and you know everybody knows i have a hard on for cup but how can i not <laughs> so uh i think he might end up being the a league winner right there let's hope All right. All right. So the next thing we're going to be going over briefly this week two matchups and then our game of the week. So let's start it off with Gavin and Wingfield, the med student who is not paying attention to his lineup right now. That's why he's only projected 98 points. Um, I'm going to say what are we doing? I'm going with Gavin. His team's hot right now. Cooper Cup is going to be a top five receiver um, while he's healthy. Uh He's got good matchups across the board. Bree Hall's usage was insane. Probably the running back one right now. Fields at quarterback is highly questionable. <laughs> Denver's not very good, so maybe uh, maybe that'll stay there. Um, the and then on the other side, you know, he lost McCaffrey, and he doesn't even have a tight end right now. And so this team's not looking too good, and so this is an easy gap in for me. Yeah, I'm gonna go Gavin too. The fields, the fields is a little sketchy. Feels like he's kind of trying to flex, but <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna be picking Gavin until Puka comes back. I think just you, you know, you got 2021 Cooper Cup and the year 2024. I feel like it's hard to go against him. Yeah, true. I go Gavin. Gavin with me. The only the thing with Fields is like, um, I the Pittsburghs are just gonna be like, all right, just. Be smart, don't turn the ball over, and we'll be fine. I feel like he's not going to be as, like, um, volatile where he can give you those 30-point weeks in the in Pittsburgh's offense. But I don't think Gavin really needs that this week anyway. So, um, oh, and he's – Oh, you know, wow. <laughs> All right. Good play, good All play. Right. Right. I said wow. earlier he's picking up Tua. I, I, I like Tua <laughs> a lot there. So. I like that way better, yeah. Thank Actually, y'all right, right. convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thank you raining, for doing that too. So, yeah. I didn't yeah. like uh I didn't like looking at to it while I had Baker about to start. So, thank you. All right. Well, I know I we're think... tw- I know we're 12 minutes past recording Thomas post and we're not even on the second preview. 
I, while we were talking about just Fields, I got reminded of that tweet that came out last night. Are you pro Kamala or pro Trump? I'm pro throwing the ball downfield, George George Pickens. That's that's <laughs> cinema right there. Oh, we could have related it. George Pickens. But, up. I was going to bring it up, but then Gavin just dropped the field. So I was like, you know what? Now I have to brute force him. Pickens is still here. He, we have a. Oh, transfer. yeah. There we go. That's the segue. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kind of think I've got – I feel pretty good going into this week, but I do – his receivers are really good. Mike Evans could torture me. He's going to probably go for like uh, thir- three touchdowns against the Lions. Um, I don't like it when I'm going against someone and their flexes are actually talented players. So hopefully they just run the ball, both these teams, um, and Ford doesn't go too crazy. But I do feel pretty good. Jared Goff, he's allowed to go crazy just because I want that to happen. But I don't think you can find a good tight end on waivers right now, so I'm not worried about that. Well, you could, but I picked him up. So You could, but Max picked him up. <laughs> yeah, Speaking boy. of... Who did Max pick? Oh, he picked a player. Okay, he picked he didn't up pick him up. He, he, he fabbed him. He put his more... He, the, he acquired he the him. the farm on him. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I, th- I I want to address that. I th- I think that that was a fine play. I don't think he reached too too far for it. I think it's just really funny that everyone decided, yeah, someone's going to bid too much, so I'm not going to bid. <laughs> like we all said that. Like yeah, was, I, I just figured it'd be too expensive, but it turned out everyone thought that except for Max. Yeah, it would have been funny crazy. if Max put in a dollar. That would have been crazy. That would have been funny. No, but I yeah, disagree. He's all yours, Max. <laughs> I, I I think it's a I think it's a bad waiver waiver spend, especially with Andrews on your team. I mean, you're just going to be who the hell are you going to start every week? And what happens when Likely gets three targets this week? We will clown Max. That's exactly yeah. what's going to happen. <laughs> Prepare yourselves. Hey, this <sighs> is good for Wingfield, though. Um, it will no longer be known as the, <laughs> the, who, the who was the guy? Joshua Kelly. Joshua Kelly. It won't be the Kelly incident. It will be the likely incident. Uh, Congrats, Wingfield. You survived. All right. Back to the battle of DC. I think, <laughs> you know, I think, uh, give me James here. I, you know, I don't really have a reason for it vibes i just i just i just think james is gonna pull it out i voted for james i don't know if y'all saw my text i really wanted him to beat terry last week just because <laughs> terry didn't deserve to win the championship and james <laughs> did it so solely off vibes i'm gonna keep riding with james wow nice uh i'm going chalk probably with uh max I like is max it. chalk what are the projections it's, it's really real close. close. Okay. So. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, we have no such name odds. fatigue with Camara, but mm-hmm. he's so good. And so I uh <laughs> I'm going with Max. Um I I don't like James's D hop mm-hmm. and That's flex running backs, but um but you know, it's preferable. Okay, and Aaron question. Jones looked like he's we... great. Are we keeping track of the picks and the records and like we, we did this year? Was that last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we yeah. will. I'll make a dot. Yeah, okay, then I'm switching to Max. I, I, <laughs> I didn't know. I thought I didn't know if this was just this for is, giggles. Not or... just vibes. This is this is serious. Okay, shit. Is this okay. If this is real, real serious shit, I'm going Max. Yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna start making some advanced stats. Um, yeah, Jack. Um, I'm gonna go with James. Um, I like. Honestly, like his flex. Uh, I mean, I guess Pollard. Pollard had a good week one, but against the Jets, it's probably not going to be the same. But I think Singletary could end up having a good week. I think Washington's defense might be one of the worst in the NFL. So this, I think this will be one of his uh, rare good weeks. And I don't like Max's flex that much. Um, and that's essentially what it comes down to because the rest of the team is, the, the rest of the matchup is pretty much the same. Uh, so I, I lean James here. All right. Um, I'm going to go with – I'm just going to go with Max here because I believe in – I think Jamar Chase is actually going to do something. 
Jamar Chase and Andrews are actually going to be valuable this next week, and I think that that's going to give him a big boost. So, but who does he start? Andrews or Likely? Andrews. He's at least he just likes having Likely. On yeah. The what if he starts Likely? That'd be. Like... Is he going to do? Is he going to be the Ravens and do the twelve personnel? I mean, he honestly <laughs> should. If, twelve personnel. No, we do start, fancy. Football. Okay. Start. Here's a question. Here's a yeah, but it's nasty. But. Addison or likely? Who do you rather start there? I'd start likely. Oof. Who, who do the Vikings? Oof. Uh, Vikings have San tough. Francisco. Oof. I think I'd go likely. Ravens I think have? if I'm Max, I'm going to go give me Isaiah likely against the Raiders. I'm yeah. going Addison. Ooh, I'm going Addison. I'd go likely. likely. All right. Because my Get thing on. is one of the, I feel like one of the tight ends is going to have a really good week. So instead mm-hmm. of you know, instead of guessing, why not just get the points? Just get the points. And then who knows? Maybe both cash in a touchdown. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I think that's fun. Fun little question there. But yeah, that's three to one of us for Max. All right. The Jacks. It's a big one. <laughs> William. John. All right. I, uh, Terry does not have a quarterback, and Tuba just got picked up. So it's kind of hard to read here. Start but Justin Fields. I still i am going to go with Jay Phil. He had a woeful week last week, but he didn't really lose anybody. His receivers are going to play better. Um, and why is Harrison in your flex being, de- de- being deceptive? Uh, I mean, I guess because uh, he starts later. He starts. I mean, later. I need to move. Terry to has well. good receivers, dude. Mm-hmm. But Ferguson's not going to play. I mean, I don't think he's going to play. Ooh, this is tough. Olave's going to torch Dallas probably. Um, that's a very <laughs> Dallas thing. No, no Shahid, Shahid's going to torch us, not oh, Olave. Oh gosh, that's so yeah. True. You say that. Asim Derek Hill. Carr went crazy, and Olave had like two catches. Um, I'm going to go with Jay Phil though. Um, I think that I will. It's hard to pick Jack when he doesn't have his quarterback or tight end figured out. But if he had something, like, if he had a solution to that problem, I would be happy to get behind him. Just put a usable guy in either of those spots. Well, because... who's available on the wire for run it, for quarterback for him to pick up? Justin uh, Fields. Can I, can I cheat? Like, is he going to pick up, like, Darnold, or is there... Trevor get T Law. Okay, so there are there are options. I mean, yeah, that would probably shift me to Terry if he got Lawrence or a tight end. He's not going to get a tight end though. There aren't tight ends on the waivers, so that's why I'm going with Jack. And I'm not saying which one. No, I got Jay Phil. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Terry. I'm gonna go. I think it's hard to. He's got great receivers. Cook and Mixon both played great. If he gets a decent quarterback off the waiver i think it's hard to go against him with the way his individual players look even with those wide receivers kind of underperforming week one yeah i'm really worried i i you know i think i'm gonna have a bounce back week but i think terry has one of my favorite teams in the league so um once he gets the gets those filled, uh, I mean, at least two of his receivers are going to go for twenty plus points, and I really like his running back. So, uh, the Cook a Chan uh, duel will be fun tomorrow night. Hopefully, a Chan plays. That would really hurt if he didn't. <laughs> but you know, I'm going to pick myself because I got to believe him myself. Play. I think he's going to play. He's he gonna he play. looked good in practice, and I think he's he finish. just needs ten carries. Just give yeah, him ten that's carries. All, all he needs. <laughs> all right, so about I think we're split on that. I think it's three one, or who? No, wait. Who, I picked you. I picked. Okay, I, picked I think you, so. I think Long's the only one who picked Jack or Terry. So <laughs> sounds good. All right, next matchup. Passowitz versus Jackson changed. What was, didn't uh, Spencer have some, wasn't he the Pittsburgh feelers? Wasn't that one of his names? 
a while now. Uh, in the Dynasty League, I am currently the Pittsburgh Feelers, and I was that all last year. So Jackson stole my stole my thunder a bit. I was like, I know this is, stole, this is stolen valor. Yeah, nah, I don't care you if you look. Though. The thing is, though, I, this is a little bit of a precursor. I play Jackson in both leagues week nine. So I was going to declare it a battle of the Titsburg feelers. And whoever loses gets it. has to change their name. I like yeah. that. Deciding so, final battle. Mm-hmm. That's good. But for the first eight weeks, we're both going to be named that in different leagues. So. Feel it. Hmm. Um, I'm going with. Ooh, I'm going with uh, pass with the team. I think McBride shows up. His receivers show up. I don't know. I feel like this is gonna be the lowest. I mean, this might be the lowest scoring out of everybody. But I think CD's gonna go off. Yeah, I think I think uh, the Cardinals gonna write the ship, and CD's gonna go off, and that's gonna. Give passwords to win. I'm not sure I'm okay with this nickname. Jackson Smith and Jigba getting in jiggy with it. That makes me uncomfortable. It's close. It's it's, it's fine. A... I think it's fine when I've said it out loud, but it looks really But when bad. you look at it, when you I'm look like, mm, at <laughs> yeah. mm. I uh, think in, in jiggy is fine, but it's it, it's on the line, so that's I'm gonna go. With <laughs> yeah, Passing that's with a, that's a vine boo rock eyebrow raise, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's got <laughs> that's solid. That was solid. Jack has the superior eyebrow raise in this competition. Yeah, that's pretty, that's that's pretty fire, there, Jack. Thanks, man. I you know that's that's <laughs> a, someone it's hit him with the uh, yeah the zoom claps. All right, um, who are you going, going with? with? I'm so gonna who go, are you going with? I'm going to go Jackson. I feel like every position you think Spencer would have an advantage in, like Bijan versus Henry, I feel like Henry could that's could be an easy two touchdowns against Las Vegas and he outscores mm-hmm. uh, Bijan. And then I think McBride uh, could have a better week than Kelsey. So I just – I don't like the way Spencer seems looks right now. Uh, I'm gonna go Jackson. I agree. I think right, Jackson. So Jackson sweep. We're calling it. Mm. All right. So that L- Longs and LJ's matchup of the week. So we're gonna quickly hit. Uh, this is an interdivision game. Brett versus Brett, uh, highest scoring team last week versus William. Yeah. So I will probably be starting Baker over Joe Burrow. Mm. Um, and I think that's my only adjustment. Unless Kenneth Walker misses, then I'll probably be starting Charbonnet over Metcalf. I don't know. That's kind of crazy. I don't know what to do. Suffering from success. I Um, am. I mean, both these teams look fantastic. Just with uh, Jordan Mason and the flex is nuts. Uh, These are crazy. But I think I'm going to go with Brett here. Just because... I think that his team just looks good all around. And he's got, uh, as, I assume he'll f- uh, get Bowers in as his tight end. And if that's the case, I'm I'm going with Brett there. Contingent, if he doesn't start Bowers, then I like William. But that's, that's my uh, pick. Oh, shit. I'm going to go William just because of Kyle Pitts. I think he's going to be the X factor <laughs> this week. I think he's he's going to be oh, – I guess Bowers kind of makes it more close. But even still, we got Kyle Pitts on a Monday night. I think he's going to just be a game-breaker for the uh, the fighting call-me profs. I think he's really going to get it done. That seems very Pitts-like, very Pitts narrative. <laughs> um, Three years for this moment, William. <laughs> I'm going to go – I'm going to go William. I th- I mean, if – the biggest thing is if CMC doesn't play, it's like like William has to win, I feel like. Um, but I, I think it could come down to this Sunday night game between Diggs and Dell, like who's going to have um, the bigger week. Because it feels like neither of them are going to have like – each have 10 points. It always feels like one of them is going to have in the 20s and the other one's going to have like single digits. 
Um, so that could be what it comes down to. And Diggs caught two touchdown passes last week, so I'll play a little bit of the regression game. I'll take William. Let's go. I um I don't want to start Owen two, so it's big. It's a big game. I think I should start Burrow or or Mayfield. I like the Buccaneers play. Oh, Detroit Lions. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Burrow in Arrowhead. Or yeah, give me, give Baker me Mayfield in, in the dome. Detroit. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna be slinging that bit, and they're gonna be down. He's out here having so. fun. Did y'all yeah, see that? Be a fun game. game, dude. He's a dog, bro. Baker, man. Imagine being a back Brown, in the year, man. A Browns fan, you're like, yeah, I've got this freak, uh, Deshaun Watson playing terrible, while Baker's yeah. Dyson dealing and going to the playoffs. Well, I just watched Joe Flacco be a better quarterback than the guy we paid two hundred thirty million. <laughs> Brutal. I I do think there's some credence to the Browns leaking the scandal so that they don't have to pay Deshaun that's, Watson. Have y'all dude, have y'all heard that that's theory? Genius, they should. Dude, I mean, that's what I horrible. thought. I was, it, y'all. So somebody sent the meme or, or no, like the 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 announcement of like Deshaun Watson. Another person has you know come forward, him, yeah. and then like the first the first reply to the tweet is like. Tony Soprano in a phone booth, and he's like, "I, I got it done." <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, "Dude, that's definitely what happened." That's see, that's the type of player I like to get on my team, though, like my fantasy team, because now he's got, he's playing for his freedom. Like, if he doesn't start playing better, it's over for this guy. Now he's back to a corner. Exactly. So, like, he he's going if he doesn't start playing football better, he's going to be in a cell. So I, I like that kind of motivation for my guys. That's what Tyree kill. I love it. I saw a tweet and it was like, uh, they need to let Deshaun start molesting people again. I was like, <laughs> bro. That's the key to his power. Yeah. <laughs> that this burner Twitter account. God, uh, <laughs> let's go through and read that. It was so funny. It's embarrassing. Yeah, man. that was good. You got, you give me that much money, I will never defend myself against any allegations. You can say anything about me. I will not hear it. I will not respond because I have $200 million. But I guess I'm just not like, I'm just built different like that. Anyway, moving on. Matchup of, Game the, of the week. week. This is the big one. All right, so we got Longs and LJ, 2-1-0. and oh. I think it's interdivisional. Is that right, Longs? Yes. Yeah. Interdivisional, we have... Stroud, Hertz, Walker, Williams, Montgomery, Connor. Scroll down, Gavin. Hill, Brown, oh, Nico, God. Keenan, uh, Ingram, Laporta, Adams, Cooks, Shahid, Moss. All right, so if we match them up all across the board. Oh my gosh, y'all literally split like back and forth. Um, I just lost to LJ, and I'm not super. I mean, he scored 122. Raheem Mostert's not going to play. Do you have anybody else besides Shahid? Um, oh, yeah, I kind of got a platoon of wide receivers yeah. I could throw in. Uh, Man, this is tough, dude. <laughs> Javante right, go back up. I Williams think... will not be getting the start. <laughs> I think, so no A-Chan, right? I don't assume o chans going to play. No A-Chan is going to be like 10 targets or 10 catches for Tyreek, probably. Mm. Probably, but AJ yeah. Brown Monday Night Football is insane. Um, no, AJ Terrell's gonna lock him up. Bro. I was gonna Terrell. say yeah. he's gonna get uh, <laughs> locked down. I don't know, man. Well, the Pickens went for like hundred yards on AJ Terrell last week, so who knows? <laughs> it's because he had the goat throwing to him. Uh, Justin Fields. <laughs> I'm expecting a better game from Devonte and Ingram, mm-hmm. and so I'm gonna go Longworth. Uh, I mean, we just, uh, I hate to be, I'm going to end up picking along. I hate to be a homer to the, uh, council. the council, man. I don't want to come off that way, but I, I mean, really if do. Kenneth doesn't play, bro, there's no way longer coins this. <laughs> oh, what do you mean, man? Just dude, Algiers just put in do, Javante, bro. He's got Algiers <laughs> do for a, like an 80 yard touchdown run. Yeah. He, he needs to take away more snaps from Bijan. 
They strayed okay, too far from the success. Can we talk about his Kyron Williams nickname? Can we talk about that for a second? I <laughs> Wait, I, I didn't see that. <laughs> I, didn't under- <laughs> I, I didn't understand that. I mean, I guess I get it, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know why, why bad. <laughs> so bad. Um, yeah, I, like yeah, I will say, though, if Kenneth Walker's out for the week, I am hosed. <laughs> I am, Javante Williams looked bad last week. Uh, yeah, Bo Nix. I really uh, the biggest thing is the flex. I mean, mm. I think I think everything matches up for the most part. Um, he probably outdoes you a little bit on running backs. I mean, barely. But the flex, I think you have a big advantage. And we just mentioned it, man. I think Shahid's gonna the yeah. Cowboys b- big play receivers against the Cowboys. It's it not it, the like. Not we don't need to focus on this guy. Big play receivers always seem to torch us. So it seems like he's got like an 80 yard touchdown up his sleeve. Yeah, um that's true. But yeah. Cooper should have had one last game. Yeah. It was so, honestly I his agree. fault. And, and the Cowboys game last week. Yeah. It's all it, everyone's due. So that was the only year game that JMO played good in last year was the Cowboys, so breakout for Shaheen next week. I'm calling it. Probably. That is I'm over. going I'm going to go with Longs. We're going council sweep. Get rolled, LJ. Is that it? <laughs> I think so. I think I think that's it. I think we're do we outro or we have an we outro. Yeah. We'll outro. No, we got that we got an outro. We need some well, weird banter for the end. Well, boys. Uh, <laughs> we said 45 minutes. It went an hour and a half. I it didn't know, go an hour man. and a half. It was, it, I think we almost. It was like an hour and 10. Hour and yeah, 15, that's fine. Yeah. We started fine. at 920. Yeah. I feel but like we had to go over the draft. Yeah, the yeah, draft is yeah. guaranteed to make it like an extra 30 minutes. So That, that was, yeah. people are going to want to hear it. Though. That's the good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. We went long this week. Yeah. Next week will well, be fine. That'll do it. Council's back, baby. We've returned. 